Welcome to Squad Tactics, strategic tips that will get you and your squad to the final circle. So you're playing squads, and you've got a group of total badasses. Between the four of you, you've got the experience, you've got the tools, and you've got the talent. There's no doubt in your mind that the chicken dinner is yours for the time. Whoa, what was that? Okay, looks like a more organized squad took you out. Here's a brief look at how to better organize your squad into squad roles. No matter how badass you think your squad is, if you're not organized in some way, you won't get very far. Keep in mind you can organize your team however you want, but take a look at how this team is organized. The squad leader calls the shots and is typically the member with the most game knowledge. The squad leader should be great at spotting enemies and is very handy with weapons like ARs and DMRs. They'll typically scout enemy locations and identify the enemy's movement. They'll then figure out the best route of approach. Hey, there's a squad looting in that house up ahead. Let's get a sniper in the back window and send the fragger to flank around left. Finally, some action. Which brings us to our next squad member, the sniper. Communication is also key for the sniper, as they relay all the information they gather about enemy numbers to their team. Two of them on the first floor. If the sniper is spotted, I'm taking one out. They need to be able to assassinate the spotter quickly and quietly. So a sniper rifle with a silencer should be their best friend. No squad is complete without the fragger or point lead. They're usually the most skilled when it comes to combat. It's up to them to lead any aggressive push or flank into enemy territory. A good fragger can help you get out of sticky situations. They should also be able to communicate the status of enemy teams. Got him. Three more inside. Pushing in now. Last, and definitely not least, you'll need a support. If you have a beginner in your squad, this is a good role for them, as it requires someone who can take direction well. It's good to designate this person as the driver, too. When things go south, you never want two people fighting over the driver's seat while the enemy is firing at you. In a breach scenario like this, the support role will follow close behind the squad leader or the fragger. After the push, the support role will loot enough health items and grenades to be able to distribute among teammates in need. And of course, should things go wrong and your squad leader or anyone else gets down, the support role is there to help get those players back on their feet. I got you, man. Here comes some heels. In the end, when it all goes perfectly according to plan, the squad works like this. Three, two, one, go. Frag out. One down. Breach, breach, breach. Not a chance. It's always important to organize your squad. This is not the only way to organize, but it's at least an unofficial starting point and a good way to get you thinking more strategically about how you and your team play PUBG. Until next time, keep playing PUBG.